Are you a real chest lover, but still, you are not a champ? It's okay, I am gonna make you a real chest champion in just a few minutes. Do you want to be an expert and win at consistent levels? Are you curious about the best tips and strategies you can even try? In this video, we will reveal all about these tricks. Without further delay, let's begin. Seriously, believe me, it's not as difficult as it sounds to win at chess on a level lower than 1800. Most sports results are determined by major mistakes or blunders. You don't need to be exceptionally talented and sharp in that game, it's a lot easier if you know and plan your game according to the tips. What are these tips and on which steps must you focus to become a pro? We will reveal it in this video, so keep watching the video. Firstly, learn to develop pieces quickly. Everyone tells you that being a theoretical player is the key to winning and also the opening knowledge is most important if you want the game in your hands. You need to know how to create parts, depending on how much below 1800 ELO you are. You should also know how to proceed once those parts are formed. Here, I am giving you the best tip. Developing your pieces to the right squares faster than your opponent is the key to every opening. After reaching this level, you are one step closer to winning the game. Another best part of winning more chess games is castling early. So what's the main benefit of castling? Castling moves your king away from the board's center while still protecting it. It also activates your rooks, preparing them to take control of the open files and re-rank them to enter the game. It's the only move that lets you simultaneously improve two of your pieces. By itself, learning to castle early on in the game will help you save a lot of trouble. Do you know that some amateur players make the mistake of developing other pieces or stealing their opponent's pawns in place of castling? That frequently results in a powerful attack against their king, from which they have to pay a high price to recover. Do you know the best strategy here, especially for beginners to win that game? Yes, if you are here to rule, the best chess strategy you can think of is controlling the center. A lot of beginners are unaware of how crucial it is to manage the four center squares, which are e4, d4, e5, and d5. Anyone who has control over these unique squares is in control of the game. One of the most important ideas in chess is space, and it is directly tied to center control. Simply put, if you have more rooms, it allows you to move pieces more effectively for both attack and defense. This indicates that your opponent is similarly at a disadvantage. They do not have the same advantage as you. As long as you are simply considering the most effective move, it is necessary to think one move ahead to win a chess. Getting control of the center can give you much more than just the freedom to move pieces around as you choose. Most importantly, it gives your pieces simple access to both sides of the board. It enables you to launch a strong, powerful attack that could ultimately result in the game being won. In any of your games, if you are unsure of what to play, keep in mind that controlling the center is usually the winning tactic. Do you understand why I'm saying this? Unfortunately, the majority of chess players are unaware of the best move. They must therefore perform some deeper calculations to ensure that they are accounting for all possible scenarios. It's not necessary to play 10 steps, though it would be excellent if you could, and consider calculating three moves deep in every position. That depth is sufficient to avoid the majority of strategies faced by players with less than 2000 ELO. And I am sure you will win a lot of chess games if you always plan the three steps. Do you know among all the strategies how you have to make your victory easily? Yes, it is true that pins, forks, and skewers win more chess games than all other chess strategies combined. Because of this, it's critical to recognize them and locate them quickly, especially if you are in challenging situations. Here's an overview of the big three principles. When a targeting piece threatens to capture a piece that is immobile and could reveal a more valuable piece, the situation is known as a pin because it momentarily displays an opponent's piece and prevents it from fully engaging in the game. Second, a fork occurs when a single piece immediately attacks more than one of the opponent's pieces. This strategy is effective since it frequently results in material loss, particularly if a check is developed. The positions of the attacked parts on a skewer are different from those of a pin, despite their similarities. A more precious item is attacked first with a skewer, a less valuable item will be exposed if it travels away. You can simply begin winning a chess by practicing locating those important elements in various locations. Don't you think that it's an excellent idea to keep your items safe? But unfortunately, amateur players risk losing out by ignoring this important rule that I am going to reveal. Though there are a few exceptions, you should consider twice before leaving your knight hanging on the side of the board, even if it appears safe to do so. 
It is a reality that chess moves quickly and it is quite simple to make tactical mistakes. Combining several checks to fork two of the hanging pieces on opposing sides of the board is a common technique. When that happens, only one of them may be saved and that person falls. If you want to become a better chess player, you must learn to hold on to your pieces and never give them away. Many players believe that in Grandmaster games only pawn structure matters, but that is untrue. Even at a lever below 1800, a weak pawn structure will put you at a disadvantage. Weak pawns that are divided, doubled or unable to defend themselves need continuous cover from other pieces. Pawns will fall if they are not well guarded. And as everyone knows, losing two or three pawns in a king and pawn ending makes it extremely difficult to win at chess. It is not a scenario you wish to find yourself in, so here's the strategy. Always take into account pawn structure alterations when you have to prevent this gloomy situation. Swap pawns, move the pawns ahead, swap pieces. A strong pawn structure is often advantageous in the middle game as well as the end game. It will be far more difficult for your opponent to undermine your position if you don't make any clear mistakes. Always learn to play by forcing moves against your opponent. Moves classified as forcing are those that compel an opponent to react. For instance, your opponent's king must escape check if you check him. The check is therefore a forced action. Your opponent probably has to take back his piece if you manage to capture it. It's a coercive action as well. Why do you think that forcing movements in chess is important? Therefore, it is true that the forcing moves reduce the game's level of risk by speeding up the calculation process. It is far safer to checkmate an opponent by constantly looking at his king than to combine pieces without requiring forced moves. When you only have to compute one line, it is considerably simpler to maintain control. As a result, you must have the ability to recognize forcing plays in chess and use this tactic to win games. Now you are capable of defeating your opponents at chess. Let's go for a game. So these are the strategies that you can even try to use to be a chess champ. These are the winning strategies that can be simple to follow to make your game win. Have you ever heard about these strategies before? What is the best strategy that you like the most? Share your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Stay tuned for the next video and until next time.